All right, guys, up doing well. So in this presentation, we're going to be talking about oxidation rates. All right, so let's dive straight in. So the oxidation rate refers to the speed at which your body metabolizes or burns through nutrients like carbohydrates, fats and proteins to produce energy. It is a key factor in determining your metabolic type with individuals being categorized as either fast or slow oxidizers. This rate influences how efficiently the body converts food into energy and can, re can affect everything from your energy levels to your mood and overall health. So you've probably seen the oxidation rate quite a bit on hair analysis. Very briefly, in simple terms, um, we use the calcium magnesium ratio. We're gonna go into this in more depth in this um, presentation. But in simple terms, the uh, you know slow oxidizer is when the calcium magnesium levels are basically above the sodium and potassium, so you can do this as a more visual thing. And if an individual is in fast oxidation, what you will see is the sodium and potassium levels are basically above the calcium and magnesium levels, like this. We are going to go into the calculations in this video, so it's like that, fast oxidation. And mixed oxidation is when you're showing basically an individual showing signs of both slow and fast. So it usually looks something like that, like a, a zigzag. And uh, you can generally get people that are more slow. So they're edging more towards slow mixed and fast mixed. But we are going to go that go through that in more detail in this presentation. So let's go over the history of the oxidation rate. And it all starts with a guy called Dr. George Watson. So Dr. George Watson was a psychologist and a nutritional scientist who made significant contributions to the understanding of the relationship between metabolism, nutrition and mental health. His work primarily focused on the idea that the rate at which an individual's body oxidizes or metabolizes food plays a crucial role in both physical and psychological well-being. He is perhaps best known for his groundbreaking book, Nutrition and Your Mind, The Psychochemical Response, which explored how biochemical imbalances in the body could influence mental states. Now, this is a book that um, Dr. Paul Leck obviously discovered and read about, and it was very exciting to him um, back when he was doing hair mineral analysis because he um, basically figured out how to see oxidation rates on a hair mineral analysis chart. All right, so Dr. W Dr. Watson identified two primary metabolic types based on how individuals metabolize nutrients. So he found two different, two different uh, types, which were fast oxidizers and slow oxidizers. So what Dr. Watson discovered is that fast oxidizers burn carbohydrates quickly often leading to low blood sugar, anxiety and irritability, and they benefit from higher fat and protein intake. So the slow oxidizers, they metabolize food more slowly and they often feel lethargic or depressed, and they benefit more from carbohydrates for quick energy. So this is something we're going to go into more detail, but this is sort of like a generalized um, overview of fast and slow oxidizers. Um, you know, this, this usually happens when the oxidation rate is, is, is more extreme. You know, for someone who's sort of uh, quite balanced, you know, so a fast oxidizer who is mild fast, they're not <clears throat> going to feel a lot of anxiety and, and a lot of irritability. And the same really with slow oxidizers, if they're sort of mild slow, you know, they're not going to necessarily feel really lethargic and really depressed um, because obviously there is sort of an optimum oxidation rate. So Dr. Watts's work introduced something called biochemical individuality. So we started to realize that individuals have, you know, ba basic biochemical needs that can be put into different categories. So emphasizing unique metabolic needs. So Watson connected mental health issues like depression and anxiety to biochemical imbalances and nutrient metabolism. So what he found was that fast oxidizers, and we are talking about extremes here, are more prone to anxiety and mood swings, 
um, especially when they have too many carbohydrates and the slow oxidizers were uh, prone to depression and fatigue um, especially when they was on more of a high fat uh, high protein diet so what he found out was that fast oxidizers basically need more fats and proteins and slow oxidizers generally needed more carbohydrates so he basically found that if the fast oxidizers had more carbohydrates they would get anxiety and irritability because it was speeding up the oxidation rate and slow oxidizers inversely if they was to have higher fat and protein it would basically slow down the oxidation rate even further and give them things like depression sluggishness fatigue etc etc so the right diet for each oxidation type can improve mood, energy and cognitive function, he concluded. And uh, Watson's, uh, Watson's psychochemical theory, uh, mental states are directly tied to the body's chemical processes. Proper nutrition helps correct imbalances, impacting both mental and emotional well-being. And this basically laid the foundation for modern integrative health approaches like physical and mental health. So this was a massive breakthrough on basically figuring out how the body metabolizes food and how different foods, different food groups are actually connected to, you know, mood and energy in particular. All right, so we're gonna talk about oxidation in biological terms, how this work in biology, biology. So this is gonna get into a bit more geeky stuff and how it actually works on a cellular level. So um, oxidative metabolism, so cellular respiration. So inside the cells, particularly the mitochondria, food, molecule, food, molecules, sorry, food molecules like glucose undergo oxidation to produce uh, ATP. So uh, the primary energy currency of the cell is ATP. So during this process, glucose is oxidized. So when something's oxidized, it loses electrons and uh, if and oxygen if it's present basically accepts the electrons uh, and, and water's formed as a uh, as a byproduct all right so when people like dr george watson or dr paulek refer to oxidation rate they're referring to the rate at which the body metabolizes nutrients so basically how quickly that process occurs you know how quickly food and nutrients lose electrons and ATPs uh, produced. So basically it's talking about how quickly the body burns through all of these foods, carbohydrates, fats and proteins to produce the current the ATP currency of the body which is um, energy. This use of the term builds on the idea that in the oxidation process nutrients are broken down, electrons are transferred resulting in energy production. So fast oxidizers are basically individuals where this process happens more quickly. Um, so they, they oxidize their food more quicker. And uh, in slow oxidizers, obviously the opposite is the case. This process happens more slowly. And um, you know, what Dr. Watts found is that for slow oxidizers, you know, they need more carbohydrates because that basically burns quicker. And this tends to speed up the process. And for fast oxidizers, if they was to um, eat carbohydrates because their body's burning food quicker, it's not really ideal for them. It generally increases the oxidation rate. So that's why they do better on fats and oils, which are much more slow burning in the body. So <clears throat> the context of oxidation rate is like a, a whole systems approach. So we're looking at the body as a whole, which is a really good way of assessing individuals. Um, so basically what we're saying here is in this context, oxidation doesn't just refer to a simple biochemical or a simple chemical reaction with oxygen, but to the overall efficiency and speed of energy production in the body, which impacts health, energy levels and mood. So it's a whole systems approach, which is a really fantastic way of assessing the body on a, on a whole. So let's look at some of the things that influence the oxidation rate. So the speed at which the body oxidizes or metabolizes food, known as oxidation rate, is influenced by a variety of factors, including genetics, hormones, nutrient intake and lifestyle. Several aspects of your biology and daily habits can cause your body to oxidize food even more quickly, fast oxidation or more slowly, slow oxidation. So some of the things that influence this are stress,